today. What are we going to learn today? Well, you're in luck because I'm going to show you how to fix your ceiling fan switch. If your ceiling fan switch is not working, I'll show you how to bypass that so that your ceiling fan will work temporarily by pulling the chain, okay? This switch right here, the fan switch, when I turn it, it doesn't operate the ceiling fan. And I'm not sure what's causing that. I'm going to have to pull that open. I'm going to show you how to do all that in a minute. And um, I don't have a ceiling fan switch to replace this with right now. So how am I going to, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take that out, disconnect the wires, and figure out whether or not I can hook that up directly so that I can just control the ceiling fan with the pole chain. If you have a ceiling fan with a pole chain, you can still operate it without this switch. Did you know that? We're just going to hook this up in a different fashion. And yeah, later on, when you go to the store and get a ceiling fan switch, you can replace that. And I'll show you how to do that on a different video, but it's, that's pretty easy. Okay, first things first, how to bypass that ceiling fan switch. Stick around, because you're going to learn something, hopefully. You might be saying, Joe, but I'm not an electrician. I don't think I can do this. Well, just watch this video. I think you can do this. If I can do this, you should be able to do this. You don't have to be a licensed electrician to be able to figure out what's going on with your ceiling fan switch, okay? But the first thing you gotta do is you gotta make sure you turn the power off to here. How are you gonna do that if the ceiling fan's not working? Well, here's a light switch right here. You could turn that on and then go back to your sub panel and figure out which breaker it is and start flipping a couple different breakers, go back in and see if your light's off and then you can check it that way. Then you'll know that the power is off to this location. The last thing you want to do is start pulling this apart thinking, oh, I'll be careful or not think about it and start pulling this apart and getting shocked. So I've got the power off to this now. Just going to take this cover plate off. You're going to take the four screws off of here and gently remove this cover plate. Make sure if you've never replaced, you've never taken that cover plate off before, uh, it might be stuck around the edges because whoever painted might have put this cover plate on before the paint dried or something like that. So be really careful. You may have to lightly score this, tap on it with a screwdriver, you know, like that, whatever to get that off. Last thing you want to do is jerk that off and rip your sheetrock around here and have it goober up your wall. Okay, so be careful with that. Now this ceiling fan switch is connected with two screws. So we're just going to undo those screws and gently pull this out of the wall. For right now, we're, we're not going to take this switch out of the wall at all. We might, we should be able to figure this out and get this disconnected and bypass this without removing this switch. Okay, so far so good. You can do this. You know, just undo these little screws. Get your Phillips screwdriver out. I know you got one somewhere in the kitchen drawer. Okay, pull these two screws out of here. Man, this is hard. Okay, those two screws out of there. Now just gently pull this out of here and see what's happening. Okay, there's two wires on the back side of here, two black wires that are gonna be connected in here and hopefully you can pull the wires nuts out. Okay. And hopefully this other one, if they did it right, if the last electrician did it right, you should be able to pull this out without taking this switch out, depending how they maneuvered their wires up back in here. But if, if you can't get to it, 
you're going to have to undo this other light switch, okay? Okay, so there's two black wires connected on the back side of here. You see that? One wire here with a small little wire nut and another black wire. And then there's a ground wire here. I want to be careful with that. It's pushed back here and connected with all kinds of other ground wires. I don't really have to get to that right now. Okay? So that's what you're going to have so far. Remember that your power's off. You should have your power off before you do this. Okay, now what? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this. I'm going to pull these wires out you know, out a little bit straight and just take a quick look at this. And you look on the back side of your ceiling fan switch and most of them should have this now, okay? There's going to be some words in here. Where this one black wire is, it says too hot, T-O-H-O-T. That means this wire is to the hot side. Okay, and down here it says to fan. All right, so the first thing we need to see now, you may not be able to read that, I'm not going to zoom it in any further, but just trust me, take my word. It's always going to be marked one wire, one of your black wires is going to say to fan, which means to the ceiling fan, the other one says too hot, which means it's going to come out from the hot power that's generated in this box to give power to this light to this light switch here the existing light switch and also to the ceiling fan switch okay hmm let's look at this and I'm pulling this wire out and there's a little mark on here and this says fan so I know this wire here this black wire here right here is going up to the ceiling fan okay and I know this black wire coming out is the power that comes out to feed this box okay so when you hook up this properly you got one line that's going to hook up the power feeding this switch the ceiling fan switch once you turn it on then it throws power out to the fan out through this other wire okay now that's how it should be hooked up. Now, is it hooked up properly? That's the thing we need to see. Now, most of the time, these are going to be hooked up properly, okay? When I take a look at this, though, this one says too hot. This wire right here. Now, what have we decided here? Look at this. This says to the ceiling fan. So the last electrician who hooked this up, they hooked it up backwards. I don't know how they did that. 99 out of 100 times, you're not going to see that. Okay, that's not what this video is all about. But I want you to check that. That's the first thing you check. And that's why I knew, after seeing that, I knew that this ceiling fan switch, it hasn't been working properly. It's intermittent. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes you turn it on from off to high, it might make a little noise and trip the breaker off. Or maybe if it's on one, as I go to turn it up to two, before I hit the two, there's little notches that hit to one, two, and three. So I know exactly where it should be. But as you're pushing up, this thing would trip the breaker every once in a while. So that's why I wanted to pull this apart, see what was going on, and this is why. It's been like this for over six years probably. And I think, now if you hook it up backwards, it'll work. Well this one here worked, but after a while it's not hooked up properly. It's taking and it's damaging the power somehow in here this, I mean, this ceiling fan switch should last well over five or six years. Well, this one didn't because it was hooked up wrong, and it's also putting 
a draw on the breaker improperly so that's why the breaker was tripping and I don't think the breaker is bad now it could be bad because this has been hooked up improperly okay so that's one of the things why this switch the ceiling fan switch is not working properly and I need to get this replaced well like I said I don't have one to replace this with so if you don't have that and if you have to special order it or you don't want to spend the money one way or another but you want your ceiling fan to work how are we going to do this ah that's the next trick okay here we go so here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna take the wire nuts off of here okay there's just little wire nuts here and I'm going to disconnect the power to this bad ceiling fan switch. Now I'm not going to take this out of the box because see if I, I'm going to, we're going to rehook this up. Okay, so just follow me here. Now this is the power that comes into the box or that comes out of the box to feed this switch. Okay, this ceiling fan switch. Now, and here's the wire that goes up, here's the wire right here that goes up to the ceiling fan. We've already con confirmed that, okay? And when you look in yours, you should be able to determine how you're going to do that. Now, this, this one, they, they had it written on here, the little tag, and it says fan right here. So I knew that that was that. Now, your electrician, whoever hooked up yours, you might not see something like this, but you might see something else. A piece of masking tape that said fan or something like that. You may have to pull the other, this other light switch out and kind of pull the wires. But this black wire, there should be a separate black wire that's going up out of the box like this. And this wire should not be hooked up to any other black wire in this box, okay? If you see that, you should be able to tell that that one is going up to the ceiling fan. Okay, that's how you're going to figure that out. But now, this is what we're going to do. We're just going to hook these two wires together. We hook these two wires together. That means, I'm going to do that really quick here. And this little orange wire nut is, is almost too small. It's really too small. Because this is stranded wire and this is really small and that's why, and this is a solid copper wire and that's why the small wire nuts were used. These little orange small wire nuts, okay? So when you go to hook these two up, you're going to have a hard time doing that with a small little wire nut. It just doesn't really want to go on there very well, if at all, okay? So you can get yourself a yellow wire nut or a red one. In this case, I got a red wire nut. Now this is bigger. And I should be able to put that on there. If you got a yellow wire nut, you can use that too. The yellows are probably better. But I had a red one and it's, it's tightening up. Okay. So now, if I turn the power back on, if you want to check it, you can leave it just like this and turn the power back on. Well, you know what? I guess we could do that. We can leave this sitting just like this so you know what's going on, okay? Let's turn the power back on. Now, when I say turn the power back on, I'm referring to the breaker. We just happen to have the sub panel right here, so I'm going to turn the breaker back on. Oh, I got the radio on, so I better turn that off. Okay, I got the power back on. Now, there is power right there, so I want to be careful with that, okay? Don't stick your hands in there or anything. We're just going to turn this ceiling fan on, okay? Now here's the pull chain. Now if I pull on this pull chain, the power should go up to here, because there's power there now. So when I pull the pull chain, the ceiling fan should work. And there it is. Now that's on high. And now you can adjust your ceiling fan from there. OK? 
Okay, the next one is medium, then it goes to low, you, then you pull it again and it goes off. Okay, it's not on now. There you go. Now that's how you can control this ceiling fan without the switch. Okay, it's pretty simple to do. I mean, some people have ceiling fans. If you've got a low ceiling, if you can reach your pull chain, they might not even have a switch, a ceiling fan switch in the wall like what we do, okay? You might not even see that. It might just be a generic connection to the ceiling fan and there you go. It's right there, okay? So now we just bypassed this switch here. Pretty simple, huh? Okay, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more, but before I do that, i got to remember to turn this breaker off. Don't get ahead of yourself, because it's easy to do. You know, if you're going to check something and turn the breaker on and off, you've got to make sure you think about what you're going to do next and turn that breaker back off. Back to the situation at hand. What are we going to do now? Well, say we don't want to just remove this bad defective ceiling fan switch because if we do that, then we're going to have a hole here when we put our cover plate back on. You know, we're going to shove this back into the wall. You're going to have a hole there. You don't want any kids poking their finger in there or doing anything and getting shocked. So I'm going to put this old ceiling fan switch back in the wall for the time being. Okay, so we're just going to take this. I'm going to bend that back up in there. I've got to push it back in there far enough to allow for us to be able to push this back in. Okay, we're just going to push this in. These wires, we don't even need wire nuts on here because there's no power to these or anything like that. Okay, push this back in far enough. Make sure, see I might have to redirect this wire nut back there because I want to get this back in there. Okay, that's good. Wow. Okay, I think that's a little better. Try to keep your grubby hands, fingerprints off the wall. That's why I'm trying to do this business here. Okay. Believe me, it's easy to do, but if you get your hands on, your fingerprints on there, you can wipe them off. Just make sure you do. Okay, now just put your screws back in there. We're going to put this back in just so it looks like we haven't even been here or done anything and we can leave it just like this for however long you want. If you don't have enough money right now, for another ceiling fan switch. Hey, that's fine. You can control the ceiling fan how I showed you. Or next time you go to the hardware store, maybe a week from now or after your next paycheck maybe. Maybe you got to wait a few weeks to save enough money to get a new dimmer switch. Then you can get one, bring it back, pull this back out and hook up the other one. Okay? Simple as that. I'm going to tighten that up. Before I snug those screws up all the way, I'm just going to kind of test this and see where it needs to be. Now see this, this cover plate's not fitting because I've got to push this over just a little bit before I tighten it up. Okay, so I'll try it about there and snug this up a little bit more. Check it again. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I guess I can tighten it up. Right there. That's going to fit on there. And we can put the small little screws back on. Now see, you didn't need to be an electrician to, to be able to do this, right? When you put these screws on, just put them in snug. Don't try to over tighten it because if you don't have a plastic, a vinyl type cover plate 
that kind of bends. You can crack this. So just get it snug. Don't don't try to overdo it or else you're going to be having to get a new cover plate too because these crack really easy. And I've seen lots of lots of uh, cover sw switches plates um, cracked and it's a good a good thing to replace cracked cover plates. It just looks kind of unsightly. You know what I mean? All right. So when you get your new ceiling fan switch, I know you'll be able to figure out how to put that in now. Now, how much should a ceiling fan switch cost? You know, you can get them at the store, maybe $15 to $20 or so. You're just going to have to look at your local hardware store and see what you can find. Now, this particular one here, I went the extra mile. And what I'm going to do, and what I've decided to do, is I saw a name on here and saw how this works. Not all of them are going to look exactly like this one, but this one has a certain name brand on there. So I'm going to get the very same one and sometimes uh, hardware stores may have just a generic dimmer without a name on it. And that's okay too, but if you want to match all of your other ceiling fans, if you got more ceiling fans at your house or wherever you live, you want it to make like for like, you want it to match exactly, you may have to spend a little bit more. Now this particular ceiling fan switch right here is $48. Yeah, all because it's got a name on it and because I want to match it up. And like I said, you go to the regular hardware store, you might be able to find them for uh, $19.99, $20. Maybe if you're lucky, $15 or so. Okay, that's it. Simple as 